Hey everyone, I just finished listening to the Mangle Street Murders, so let's talk about it. This is a Victorian crime story detective novel and it's set in 1880 in London. We have a detective, Sidney Grice, who is a very unlikable character. He's very rude, he's very mean. He doesn't really explain what he's doing a lot. He has a tick to eat very healthy, so he doesn't eat meat. He doesn't like alcohol, he doesn't like smoke. So he's very untypical for the 1880s. The story is told from the point of March Middleton, a young woman who lives with Sidney Grice because her family has died. She doesn't have any relatives left apart from him. And so he becomes her guardian. And she is very clever. She is very smart. She wrote the biography of her father who died a few years ago and he was a army surgeon. So she has seen a lot of the world and a lot of gruesome things. This is the first in a series. So those two are making up a detective duo that will hopefully solve a lot of crimes in the future. In this novel, the two detectives have to solve the murder of a young woman who was supposedly stabbed by her husband, but the mother-in-law doesn't believe that. So she tries to hire Sydney Rice. And that's all I'm going to tell you about the mystery. Apart from that, it wasn't very exciting. It was rather stale and easy. And I had some good ideas of the solution. There were some twists that I didn't foresee, but it's not really fast paced or gripping. The mystery is not the best part about this novel. As I mentioned before, March Middleton tells the story. So we have everything from her point of view and her thoughts and ideas and perspective on everything. Partly it is very descriptive in an interesting way. The things she describes are somewhat quirky at points and at other times you think, why is she talking about that? But what I enjoyed best about her narration was how witty she was and how clever when it came to all the men making remarks about how women cannot do this, how women cannot do that, and apologizing for her being there and not wanting to allow her to go near to the dead bodies or to the crime scene and always talking about her frail situation. And she always had a comeback for all of these males. I also had the feeling that she was asking more questions and trying to find out what was going on more than Sidney Grice. So most of the information about the case we have through her questions and her line of investigation, not really through his. So she is definitely the likable character in this novel and she's very feminist, she's very modern. So she's a lot of fun. But because of all this, I was the more disappointed when she didn't figure out what was going on. When it turns out that in the end, Sidney Grice had to tell her what was going on, that he still remained the superior being. As before, it was always portrayed as he's an idiot and she's very clever and women and men are on the same level or even maybe the women are a little bit better, at least from her perspective. And at the end, she needed him to clear up things. She didn't see a lot of things. She was very gullible on some points and she was very feminine as portrayed by the others. And that disappointed me quite a lot because the whole novel had this buildup of a feminist novel of her being so clever and not less than the man. And the novel at the end didn't live up to that. Aside from that, I really enjoyed listening to the novel. The narrator had a very calming and soothing voice and I think she impersonated the character of all the people very well. So we'll continue with the series and I hope that March Middleton gets a little bit more clever when it comes to solving the mysteries and that she can actually defend herself against Sidney Rice. If you have read The Mangled Street Murders, let me know in comments what you thought of it. Thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye.